I'm here with Brendan Tobin from 790 The Ticket. Brendan, the last time you and I talked, we were uh, courtside before game five discussing what we expected from that game. And you and I agreed that we didn't know who was going to win, but we thought we were ready for a classic. Turns out, uh, I'm not going to say we were wrong about game five. I'm just going to say that we were early on our classic prediction because game six turned out to be the classic. Jimmy Butler, 47 points. And then game seven turned out to be a classic as well. So I just want to know, since we haven't talked since then, um, what were your thoughts? What were your think? What were you thinking? What were you feeling when Jimmy Butler's ball, when that shot was in the air before it front rimmed? What What were your feelings? What were you thinking? I thought it was going in. I thought, uh, you know, it was because it was. I, I remember like going through the roller coaster through the fourth quarter and feeling like there was points where I lost hope. It felt like it was, I think it was after that sick Tatum shot. I was like, man, that's probably it. And, you know, then Max Struess hits that three yeah. and they get the stop. And I'm like, oh my God, I really legitimately thought at all points, I'm like, this is going to happen. And, you know, uh, Jimmy rising up, I, I felt good about it because he's just been, he's been better with his three point shot in the playoffs. He's been an absolute monster the last couple of games. Um, I was okay with the shot then. I'm okay with the shot now. I've heard the criticism, the analysis of it, all that type of stuff. I get it. Um, but I don't think that that's a pure numbers moment. I think that is a uh, – I think that's a – I've been playing every single minute here. I've been the best player on the floor the last two games. I'm going to go and try and, and take this all. But I definitely thought it was going in, and I was I was gutted when it did not. So, I mean, you kind of touched on it there. Did you feel like in the moment – that it was the right play. Because me, I, I was like, what are you doing? He's taking the three. You got the lane. And then afterwards, the more I thought about it, the more I thought about it, the more I thought about it, I was like, yes, 100% that was the right shot. But how did you feel about it then versus like kind of now? No, I felt it. I actually, it was funny. I felt fine about it in the moment. And then I actually was, I was funny walking down the stairs, how mad a lot of people were about mm. him not taking the shot. Um, did you go out, when you say walk out the stairs, did you go down from your seat like yeah, the yeah. lower bowls or did so, you go back through the stairs? Yeah. I went back through the stairs. Like when I was yeah, walking so you saw the concourse and everything, yeah, the whole concourse people. like coming down, like all the fans really grumbling about it uh, on Twitter. A lot of people were upset about it. And then I think like doing the radio show the next morning, more people had come over to the side of, you know what? He's earned that shot and all this. So the more people had come over to where I initially was. Cause yeah, I just, I, 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 I believe in that with him. Like he has been, everything for them in this playoff run and he has added that to his repertoire i think if i, I think if that was like you know the middle of january or february i'd be like well that's not how jimmy butler should go win a game but he has he has definitely busted it out more um you know hit four of them in his in his classic in game six so i was okay with it i get it like I, i'm not saying anybody who disagrees with it is an idiot i just think that you kind of got to give jimmy butler the respect there because of everything he's been at that point, it already had 35 points for the team. It played every single minute. And so I was I was fine with it. Yeah, I was fine with it, too. And the more I thought about it, um, you know, if you take that three and you miss the way that he did, there was still some time left on the clock where you get a stop on the other end and then you come back and potentially have a, a chance. The problem was that they they fouled on the other end right. afterwards defensively. It was basically just a two for one. I mean, all yeah. of this stuff, it was just essentially a two for one. I I. I hated it in the moment. I was like, I literally screamed at the uh, screamed, What are you doing? And, and, uh, just instinctually. And, uh, but the more I thought about it, the more it made sense. And I don't know how much math Jimmy Butler was actually doing. Like, there's been so many like statistical breakdowns that he'd have a X percent chance if he to win. Like, Jimmy Butler, I, I don't believe he's doing all that math. I think that he got down there. <clears throat> And believed he could make that shot. And so he took the shot. And that's it. And that's just that's what he did. And you know what? He's earned that. Um, I have no pro I have no problem with it now. And I actually think even logically it was the right thing to do. Um, the shot doesn't go in. If it did go in, that is just a legacy defining shot. I mean, that is paragraph one of his Hall of Fame resume. That's that's where that shot goes. But he didn't make it, but he still has this incredible postseason run. Can we put that Jimmy Butler run, the 47 points in game six, the muscling through the injuries, what he was able to do in game seven, everything that he did in the entire postseason, lifting an injured Heat team, are we able to put that on the Mount Rushmore of Miami Heat playoff performances despite it not ending in a championship or even a finals run? 
That's a good question. I've been thinking a lot about, you know, where his standing in the franchise is going to ultimately end up because it's a lot right now. I, I, feel, I feel like he's kind of turning into like the new age Alonzo morning where it's like he is, mm. you know, in these teams that were very, very good. But will they ever get over the hump, even though everybody had the respect of Alonzo thinking that he was the ultimate winner, the champion, all that type of stuff, everything that you, everything this franchise stands for and that they want. Um, you know, is he going to end up being that and then needing something late to get to his ring or, uh, or is he, is he already there with, you know, obviously Dwayne's always going to be one, mm -hmm. but you know, is he going to be able to cement himself as number two? Is he, you know, going to ever get the chance to pass maybe even LeBron's crazy run with the heat? I think that it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the rest of it plays out. But I think, yeah, you know, you think about the thing that I think is, is got to be appreciated with Jimmy Butler with the Miami heat is the post big three era and Dwayne Wade leaving, having to find somebody to kind of pass the torch to them going through these eras of like Goran Dragic with Josh Richardson and justice Winslow mm -hmm. and Dion waiters and James Johnson and, them just wanting to make, you know, Riley get that one splash at, at an all-star who was going to be here. And then the fact that he comes here, he decides to come here after the Philly breakup, and they've gone to two out of three Eastern Conference finals. They were a one seed, and he's just kind of brought the elite status of the team back, where I don't think a lot of people thought he was good enough to do that. So I think it does have to go up in the all-time greats of the heat playoff runs because of just it's solidifying what i think this playoff run solidified for him was everybody has looked at the bubble run as something that's separate wrong or right it is what it is that's what people do and i think that he really needed something else to really mm -hmm. solidify that and i think that he did do that with this run um i think it is just it is unfortunate though that yeah like i think you know, three of his most iconic games are all uh, playoff series that he didn't end up winning with his finals performances. And now this one on game six and nearly what he did in game seven. So that has got a sting, but I think we all know, like this is a series that was between two really closely contested teams, two teams that were very even two teams that were banged up, two teams that were great on the defensive side of the floor. And man, he's a shot away from, you know, playing tonight and, and getting another crack at the championship. Yeah. I think what you touched on there, the fact that, you know, his greatest performances ultimately came in, in series losses kind of is the Jimmy Butler legacy, the story with him, right? Like this isn't a guy who was the top pick in a draft. This isn't LeBron. This isn't KD. It was not even Giannis who was at least picked like right outside the lottery. Like this is a guy who was not, who was sort of an overlooked draft pick and kind of muscles his way into the all-star team and then muscles his way into whatever he is now. And uh, I'm, I'm past the point now of thinking that he's not good enough to at least give you a chance to get to the finals, but there is still sort of this, this ceiling to him that he just continues to basically punch through like a ceiling from a talent level that he right. continues to punch through with whatever it is, toughness, uh, practice skill, what timeliness, clutchness, whatever we want to call all of this. Um, and and I wonder if that's ultimately like what his legacy is, is in an age of superstars ringing every last drop from whatever talent that he has. I don't know that you could really say that about a whole lot of other guys in the NBA. You could certainly say it about Jimmy Butler. And I think what you could definitely say is that he does that more. He does more with less than I think anybody else in the league. Well, I think the thing that's interesting, too, is like he comes down here and everybody thinks it's like, he's the ancillary piece. Like how dare you leave Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons and Tobias, that's going to be the title contender. You're supposed to be that last piece and you can't go do that by yourself down in Miami. And I think that that, uh, that's been the thing where you, you know, you hear him, uh, you know, say Tobias Harris over me as he walks back to the locker room and, you know, is, sticking it into the Philly fans face that, Oh, Joel Embiid and I always still want to play together and all that type of stuff um, is that he is good enough. He is good enough to be that guy. And it's been unfortunate that his last two cracks at it. The thing that's really failed him is that 
He has uh, two point guards that have been very, very close to him and that he had great relationships with, and their bodies have both broken down right beside him. And I think that's been, I think Kyle Lowry showed some really gutty moments in that game six, but, you know, his basically was a non factor all playoffs, you know, and then Goran Dragic was great for him in the 2020 playoffs, broke down and had that horrible injury in the finals. And then, you know, really wasn't the same guy the next year after. So, yeah, he, 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 you hear all around the league about these people who need more help. They need more help. And I think Jimmy is kind of looked about, nobody really puts him in that, oh, poor Jimmy Butler. And I don't think he wants any sympathy. I don't think he wants that. I think that's maybe that's part of his attitude with it. But he, uh, he has been cursed the last couple of times around where his, uh, his, his teams have really fallen apart around him. Yeah, I mean, was that the most disappointing thing to you about the postseason for Miami? Was it that Kyle Lowry just was injured, not available, his body broke down? Was there something else? Like, what was the most disappointing thing to you from the Heat in the playoffs? Yeah, the Kyle thing was definitely up there just because that was their big swing. You know, I, there's so much talk about what they're going to do in the offseason. I'm, I'm sure we'll get to that. But yeah. people forget, like, their big swing in this offseason was to bring in Kyle Lowry. Like, they wanted to make this big upgrade at the point guard position. And, you know, if you, you know, like I, I know you watched it West, so it's like he had very, a very, very important impact on this team this year. You know, when Jimmy was out and Bam was out, you know, he was leading a lot of young guys. He was huge in the development of Tyler Hero. He was huge in the development of Gabe Vincent. So Kyle did a lot of good things uh, from organizing the team, from a real captain, you know, uh, leading the team standpoint, all that type of stuff. But, you know, his shot really wasn't there for the most part this year. His offensive game really didn't go in up until like a real late run in the season. So to see him kind of come in there and then get hurt, they tried to bring him back in the Sixers series, clearly wasn't right. They brought him back for that game three. It looked like he was okay for like a half. Mm -hmm. Um so, yeah, that's that's the unfortunate thing is you go and you make this move for Kyle Lowry, which obviously was a huge headache, too, because they get in tampering or – what is it? Jumping the gun uh, accusations from the right. league. They're suffering sanctions for it because this was a guy that they thought this was going to be the perfect guy next to Jimmy. He has a great relationship with Jimmy. They're very close. They do all the press conferences together. Godfather of their kids, you know, all that type of stuff. So um, I, th I think that it's disappointing that he didn't work out. Um, it's disappointing that he did break down. And it is a little bit worrisome that before next year's playoffs, he's going to be 37 years old. And I think we're seeing with, the Suns is that, yeah, Chris Ball had a great run to the finals, all that, but you never quite know if he's going to be able to hold up by the end of this thing. So I think that's why there's got to be a lot of questions about um, is that going to be somebody that's going to be there going forward? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of fans think, oh, just bad luck. Kyle Lowry gets hurt. That's sort of the risk inherent in adding a 36 and 37 year old point guard, right? Is that, yeah, he is old. There's a yep. really good chance that his body will break down. thought it was interesting that Spo in the exit interview said, you know, I really thought Lowry was in a groove about six weeks before the playoffs started. And if that's what you're counting on is for Kyle Lowry to be in a groove six weeks before the playoffs begin, I mean, is that kind of the wall for him at this stage in his career? I think he absolutely has to come back in the best shape of his life. Yeah. Uh, it, it it can't be anything less than that or or – the Heat need to start somehow looking elsewhere, but even that is hard when the guy's making almost $30 million a year, and it's like, all right, good luck trading this guy. And like you said, he's got a relationship with Jimmy Butler. I don't think that if the front office were going to ask Jimmy, I don't think Jimmy's like, yeah, trade this guy for just anybody. So um, it's tough, I, and I think ultimately it's not quite the Russell Westbrook thing. Like, it right. wasn't a complete negative, but it's similar in that you're kind of stuck with this guy, and you just need him to be better for you next season. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. And um, I think that this was an interesting year this year for this team because Spo did really give a lot of faith to those veterans. You know, like mm -hmm. this was not a team like he believed in PJ Tucker and, you know, I think gave them all a little bit more leeway because they were champions. They were looked, PJ and Kyle were looked upon as the guys that, hey, show them the way. You guys are the champions. Come in here a little bit. And that's interesting for an organization that, considers itself a championship organization, but hasn't won it ultimately in, in a decade. So um, that was an interesting dynamic this year. 
but yeah, they do need him to be better. And I agree with you. I think that it's going to, it's going to take, it would take probably a seismic move for them to make that trade. It, you know, they do have the, I guess, skeleton work. If they, if there was uh, one of Pat Riley's vaunted orcas that were out there that wants to come down here, which look, I mean, you see a team that's a game away from the NBA finals. I think there will be people uh, if they do want to leave their situation that would say, Hey, Miami is the place I want to go. Um, I agree that Kyle is not an albatross like Russell Westbrook because I do think that people really do like playing with him um, and he is a positive influence in that regard. So if there was a team that did feel like they needed a point guard, I don't feel like Kyle is the type of guy where they're going to like shy away from going after him. Mm -hmm. But I agree. I think that you really have to say, hey, is Jimmy, is this the type of guy you want? Similarly, probably to uh, with the Goron deal. Like, hey, you know, he had a good relationship with Goron, but, you know, what are the type of guys you would want out of there? Okay, Kyle Lowry, I'm definitely in on that. So um, the shape thing is definitely an interesting thing. He definitely has to get himself in, and hopefully it's a lot smoother because he obviously was dealing with something off the court right. that uh, he was going through this year that deterred him as well. So maybe year two in Miami will be a little bit cleaner for him in that mm. regard. But uh, it definitely was uh, – it had its moments in the regular season, but ultimately I, would, I think you could say that uh, it did. It wasn't good enough for what they needed out of year one from Kyle Lowry. Yeah, I mean, you've got to. I don't know what you were expecting if you're not even just a little disappointed from what from what Lowry provided. And that's like you said, there's a lot of issues and reasons for that. Uh, maybe year two is a little bit better. A, a full off season in this training program and things like that. We'll see. But um, being a game away from the finals leaves the Heat sort of in an interesting crossroads here. Do you bring that core back and just sort of tinker around the edges? Or do you say, you know what? We really wrung everything out we could of this season. Um, and and maybe we need to go find another star just in case somebody like Jimmy Butler doesn't have another run like that in him. Or Kyle Lowry does break down. Or if this is all we're going to get from Bam Adebayo going forward. Like, where are you on this? Are you more team bring back this core, tinker on the edges? Or it's time to go looking for that second star next to Jimmy. Yeah. You know, we've been talking a lot about this on the show this week for sure. And um, I feel like, and I'm curious, I'm very curious to see what Pat is going to say whenever Riley speaks mm -hmm. um, and kind of get what his vibe of it is, because you think back to them going to the finals a couple of years ago and the team that, you know, went in the bubble and they really just ran it back basically outside of Jay Crowder. They kind of just brought back the whole group. And it was a disaster for the most, for, right. for, you know, standards wise. Like everybody talked about it, just wasn't the same chemistry. That was a team that had, you know, the team that went before they went to the bubble always had really good chemistry. Like they were always vibing in the locker room, joking with each other. And it just wasn't quite the same. You know, Tyler was going through some growing pains, he was dealing with the trade rumors. Um, you know, Myers Leonard was dealing with this issue. They tried to make that a thing again. That didn't work. They tried Trevor Ariza. So it just, it wasn't a pure run back, but it just didn't have the same. It was, I was honestly, it was funny because like the best moments of it, Jimmy was dealing with a lot of injuries too. And the best moments really were Jimmy was trying to push and carry the team again. Right. And I think that when you need him to do that during a regular season, you're in for a tough time. So. That leads me to believe that there are going to be some changes to this team going in there for a couple of reasons. One, I don't know about what you thought of the whole Tyler Hero thing, but I found it interesting with him saying that when, when he's asked about the contract, kind of non-committal, like it's up to my agent. We're really going to see what happens. Makes me to believe like he doesn't really know right. what his future is here and also making it clear that he wants to start which I've, I think he's warranted in wanting that. Don't get me wrong. I think Tyler Hero does deserve to start. And I do think that, you know, when you do that for three years and you're six man of the year and you have all these great aspirations, you are 22 years old, I think it's okay for him to feel that way. I think the question, though, is for the Heat, really it comes down to this. Do we believe that Tyler Hero is going to take enough of a leap and improve enough in the playoffs to really help Jimmy Butler bolster from that scoring from that scoring right. problem. Bam, I'm not worried about because I feel like Bam just he's a playoff player to me in that look, I understand everybody wants him to drop 25 and 11 every single time. 
but I know he can be on the court for every minute of a game seven. He could shut the other team down, and we show that he could be that supporting piece to Jimmy in important moments. Definitely want to see more of it. He's got to find that gear to be more aggressive, but he still is only 24, and I don't feel like there's a physical problem there with Bam. Right. With Tyler, I felt like he got bullied again a little bit in the playoffs, even before the injury. He got taken out of his game, and then they were kind of talking it up in the uh, post game, uh, post press conference of, oh, every team is gunning for him. Even Udonis was saying, oh, they were treating him like we treated James Harden. And so maybe that's true, or maybe that's saying, you know, maybe that's protecting your asset a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. But I think that's the big question they have to ask themselves is, Tyler wants to start. He wants to get to this next phase of his career. Is that next phase of your career good enough to be Jimmy's Robin? Is, that a, is, he, is he good enough to do that? If he's not, then you have to figure out what that piece is because between Kyle Lowry getting older, you need then Tyler to then take the jump to be in his prime and ready to be a, to be Jimmy's B in the playoffs. Right. I think you just nailed it. I think that's the absolute fundamental question facing the Heat this offseason. And it makes it really hard to evaluate what that is, considering that he was hurt in the most important series of the season. Um, and it, it would have been really interesting to see Tyler Hero against the Celtics and what he could have done healthy, right? But this is now two straight playoffs where he hasn't performed up to standards. Uh, there's many reasons that we can point to, but th the facts are the facts that he's just underperformed in the playoffs. And, um, you know, I do think that there was a little bit of a PR spin about all the stuff. Like that's the ultimate sign of respect to Tyler hero and what he's right. done that they're doubling him. I'm like, no, they're doubling him because they know they can shut down the offense as soon as he gets the ball and trap him and potentially cause a turnover and get easy points in transition. That's why they're doubling him. But, uh, I do firmly believe in Tyler Hero. I, I, I think he made a huge leap during the regular season. I think that groin injury was bothering him, and he kind of said this during the exit interview. It was bothering him long before he was even absent, and I wonder how much of an effect that was. But yeah. there are definitely parts of his game that need to improve. Uh, he's not a great athlete, that's, so that's not going to improve. He needs to get stronger, but he's 22 years old. Like His, his uh, physical prime is not going to be for another four or five years probably. You know, and, and so if you're the Heat, can you afford to wait that long? Like he was talking about how much weight he lost during the season. I think that's just going to happen when he's that young. You know, unless this guy's yeah. going out and drinking a six pack and eating Big Macs every single night, he's going to probably drop weight during the season. So um, I, I don't know. I, I think that is just really the fundamental question that if you're the Heat, do you believe that Tyler Hero by next year can come back? And even Spolster after, he's like, sometimes a guy isn't going to, to, age the way you need him to in your window he's going to age according to his like sort of window and in his timeline and so this all goes to the, the the real question which is if you don't believe if the if pat riley does not believe that hero could be that guy as soon as next season and next postseason do you start packaging him and whatever salary and draft picks to try to get a star and the name that everybody wants to look at is donovan mitchell who has been linked to miami over several reports but there's other names out there too is there a name that stands out to you as maybe the ideal fit next to Jimmy Butler? I've been talking about the Donovan Mitchell thing basically since Dwayne Wade took ownership over there because I just felt like, well, that's a big mistake by them because he's <laughs> like their, their idea is they're going to have him over there to keep him there. And Dwayne Wade, if he's anything, is always going to tell people his honest opinion, especially players. And mm -hmm. just like it was with Jimmy Butler, he didn't directly tell Jimmy Butler, hey, come to Miami. But he did say all the things you're looking for, this is the organization where you'd want to go. Um, and there's a lot of weird stuff that's going on in Utah because I didn't really think the Donovan Mitchell thing was viable for another few years because he is young. It's typically a little too early for a guy to say, hey, I signed this big deal, but I want out, and it happens. But this is a different NBA. This is not the big three era where guys wait till they're free agents and then they bolt. They are – signing their big deals, and then they're just saying where they want to go. We've heard this stuff with Zion. We've heard this stuff with other stars where it's just like get the money and then make a stink, get the hell out of there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Donovan Mitchell would be huge. I mean, that would be, for me, just a, a – for a couple reasons. One, yeah, it feels like the perfect kind of piece to add to Jimmy and Bam. Second, he has a really great relationship with Bam Adebayo. So mm -hmm. I feel like at our comfort level, it's a great fit. Um, the only thing I think is probably an issue now is – the Dwayne Wade piece is great, but now their other guy, whatever the hell, Danny Ainge's governor, CEO of basketball operations, 
Well, you know that him and Riley aren't on the greatest of terms, so that could always be an issue as well. Right. Um, people will point to Bradley Beal. I never believe I don't I think Bradley Beal's gonna retire a wizard. I don't think he's ever gonna leave. I think he's gonna just keep signing gazillion dollar deals and always just like tweets about being somewhere else, but he's always gonna be where he is. Um Yeah, Beal's so, not the guy to me either. I'd rather just hang on to Hero. I think I would that, too. Yeah. All the I, assets. Yeah. I think that I think if it was if it was going to be all things equal, I think cause because Donovan's young enough where it's like, okay, you're not you're still you're you're gonna have your next guy after Jimmy is done, you know? Right. And I think for Hero, the thing that's tough is like there were times this year where I thought him and Bam really did look like they could carry this team during the regular season with Jimmy being out. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it does change during the playoffs and it does it does get tougher. And I do think that for him, he even mentioned it unsolicited, like, oh, people forget I'm 22 years old, which uh, is is a way of saying like, I don't know, if that's a way of gracefully asking for patience. I don't know if that's you know, putting it out there to people and other organizations like I have a lot, I still have le leaps and bounds. I can go. I don't know what that is, but I think for, uh, I, I think that there's, th it's going to, it, it, honestly, it could even be a Kyrie Irving. Like if there was a, a situation where he and the Nets have a breakup and you're telling me that, you know, they could do a, a Lowry for Kyrie swap. It's not like he's never been tied to Miami before. Um, is he the perfect heat culture guy? Maybe not, but right. I think I am a, actively uh, rooting against that. I have no interest in covering Kyrie Irving, but I see your point. No, from I mean, a basketball but, standpoint. I think that I really do think a lot of it's on the table this year. Like, I yeah. really think that when you when we're going to step back, I think that there's going to be a lot of disgruntled stars out there. They're going to look at the landscape and say, I want to get out of my situation. Where's a place I want to go? And I do think that with what Jimmy's been able to do and with having an unselfish guy like Bam, I think those two. I ride with, I think that those are your two pillars still. And I think you think that they're the two guys that basically can fit next to anybody. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, it would be somebody who can shoot a little bit because they don't, you know, but <laughs> um, I don't quite know who that piece is. But the Donovan Mitchell thing is interesting that in that I, I feel like it's happening a lot earlier than I anticipated right. it happening. Yeah, between him and Zion Williamson, we're seeing p potentially the and even you could argue Ben Simmons that already happened, like the 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 exit of guys early in their contracts and things like that's it's a little unprecedented. But maybe now it's it won't be so much. I I don't know. Um, the 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 Tyler Hero piece too. There's a couple things like you do like you said you need you need somebody who can shoot. And Tyler Hero is never going to be like this predator style wing. He needs to get even better as a pull-up shooter. And I've, you know, I covered the Warriors for a little bit. And, and I obviously know the magic that Steph Curry has. And I'm not comparing Tyler Hero to Steph Curry. But it always struck me as very similar when Tyler Hero checked into the game in, at FTX. It, it felt very similar to when Steph would check into the game at Oracle or at Chase Center. Just the way that the fans responded to yeah. him. And, and then the magic that he can create sometimes. Where it's just like two straight pull-up threes that nobody else on the roster has any business taking. Let alone making. And and I and I wonder if he can if that's sort of his next step is just get so good at this thing. Just be one of the best pull up three point shooters in the league. And now you really do have that perfect fit next to Jimmy, who is that physical predator mismatch hunting wing and Bam Adebayo, your do everything defender who can basically by himself make you a top 10 or 12 defense. Yeah, um, I mean, essentially doing what you would hope is a, a higher class level of what Struess did. I mean, Struess right. is a bit more of a man. I don't mean that disrespectfully to Tyler, but he's 25, I think, is Max Strews, 26. Yeah. So he's got, like, you know, he can kind of deal with the physicality of it. And you saw some of the some of the threes he was pulling up for. I mm -hmm. mean, it was not, and they weren't all going in by any means, but he did hit some big onions once, too. Uh, I'm with you on that. Like, one of the, I was, I was doing, when I was filling in the post game, uh, I was, like, I was looking over to Tommy Tiger, like, like, you see how Tyler Hero's shooting, like, you know, 23% from three in the postseason? Like, I thought I was, like, <laughs> Because I knew he wasn't playing great, but I was right. like, it was the first time I had looked at him and like, is that real? Like he's he's been that bad from downtown. Because I yeah, it's just one of those th and and yeah, he can't he can't be that bad at that because like that's got to be the thing where he's supposed to be special at right. Um, because we know like you, you see that shot, it's pure as hell. Uh, for fans who don't know, like you know, and, and Wes can attest to this is like this guy's got one of the most interesting pregame routines from hitting yes. like every spot on the floor very detailed on what he puts into his work 
And I mean, it's rare to see him. Miss. I know NBA. This is rare to see Tyler Hero miss. He's that pure. Um, so yeah, the, that three point shooting being what it was in the in the postseason. I'm sure the physicality of people and the looks people had had something to do with it. But that's got that that was uh, almost unexplainable to me in a right. lot of ways. I was like, wow, that, it's yeah, that he, bad right now. He needs to be better at it, especially too because you know we all love the Max Struces, the Caleb Martins, the Gabe Vincents, but they were undrafted for a reason. There's a ceiling to that talent level, right? Like they're helpful players. Tell you, Hero's a lottery talent. He's got a natural basketball offensive feel for the game that cannot be taught in, in many and right. in a very natural he's the second stroke. leading scorer too right yeah. like it's that they i mean when you're the second leading scorer on a team you're an essential part of the team all year yeah they if i'm, him, I'm studying i'm studying the way steph anticipates those traps gets the ball out quickly that's what i'm doing it's not getting more it's not becoming taller and stronger overnight to beat the traps it's anticipating those things early and and being able to take advantage of becoming an off ball threat in a way that I don't even think he was this year, but I know that he needs he understands that he needs to add that to his game. Um, one other name I'll throw out there for the offseason that I'm just I'm just throwing that out there, and that's all I'm going to do. Zach Levine, he's a free agent. Rumors that he might be unhappy with his role in Chicago. To me, he is a knockdown three point shooter, absolute, and and you could put him next to Lowry because the size isn't an issue. That's my. One concern with the Donovan Mitchell thing is that okay, now you got two six foot guards in the backcourt. That's defensively a concern. But even with if you put Levine six five six six, his knockdown three point shooting ability is good as almost anybody in the NBA outside of the Bay Area. Um, you put that next to Jimmy and Bam, then you really have something. So I'll just throw that name out there. That might potentially be a sign and trade kind of thing. Um, does this organization need to kind of decide what the more important window is, the Butler Lowry one or the Bam slash Tyler Hero one? Or can they kind of have their cake and eat it too, like the Warriors are when of course the Warriors are in the finals? I um I don't think that's a debate. I cause I don't think that I, I don't think that I think the debate is it's the Jimmy Butler window. Like I don't uh this thing of they'll be will they be held up with Kyle I don't know with the if it's that important of a relationship for for Jimmy to keep together I think like you said if it's the right type of player Jimmy wants to win that ring at all costs I don't think Kyle Lowry holds against him dude seems like a pro's pro um I don't you know Dwayne you know LeBron James left Dwayne Wade they're still best of friends I think that those guys get it it's a business but um no I don't think there's any debate about what window to pick I think that that because I think that Bam, Bam to me, I feel like, uh, uh, you know, unless this Joel Embiid thing becomes real, because I don't think that the Phillies would would actually trade him unless they got Bam Adebayo in that trade. Right. Uh, unless the Embiid thing becomes real, I don't think Bam Adebayo is going anywhere. And I think that he is young, yes, but he is proven that he is an essential part of a run because of how good he is defensively. Um, and I do think that the team believes that the offensive stuff will come. We saw flashes of it in the in the series. But yeah, the the Tyler the Tyler question is a question for sure, and I, I think it, it kind of comes full circle. Is do you believe that he can be Jimmy's really be Jimmy's sidekick essentially, be that scoring punch next to him? Because I don't think it's hey we gotta wait. The only thing that's interesting you bring up the fan thing is how much does the organization weigh his popularity? Right, because he is super popular. Like he is. Yeah, the the most jerseys that get sold in that arena are fourteen jerseys. Biggest pop in the arena goes to Boy Wonder. Oddly enough, all the celebrities talk to him. I'm Drake, mm-hmm. uh, Jake Paul, Floyd Mayweather. They all like talking to Boy Wonder. So he's got like an element of cool to him, an X factor. I've talked to the Heat Market Department about this stuff. Like he's just got the it factor. Like if you ask them, like I'm sure they don't want Tyler here to go anywhere because right. people love him down here. But from a basketball standpoint, ultimately, I think Riley is going to ask himself. And I don't even think it's a question of Tyler's work ethic. I think that they think he works hard enough. It's just, is it going to come fast enough? Is it going to come at the right time? Um, This isn't, I'm not comparing these two because they're a little bit different personalities, but this happened with the big three era with, with Michael Beasley. Like Mm. the reason Michael Beasley, they didn't want him part of that era is because they thought he's not serious. He's a kid. He's a kid. He's goofy. I'm not saying Tyler hero is, is, is of that ilk, but they just, he, they didn't think Michael Beasley was going to be on the timeline. They said, no, we'd rather have a guy like Mike Miller here to be the compliment right. to these guys, not, not a Michael Beasley. So I do think that those things uh, – I, I do think that they got a tough decision to make because I do think, like you said, Tyler Hero 
made a leap this year. I don't want to make it seem like he didn't. Um, but I think that Jimmy Butler has shown his worth and they gave him a big extension that we need to take advantage of this guy's window and get him the right guy so he gets the true crack of the championship he deserves. Uh, I'll, I'll, we can end this part of the conversation with the, I, I, I really would be hesitant to trade Tyler Hero based on what we see out of these two teams in the finals, the Warriors and the Celtics, because they did, there is an element to, of strength to having a homegrown group. Yep. And, um, and if, and the Heat are so short on assets already. And I know they're just creating them out of nowhere, whether, depending on what you think about Duncan Robinson and Gabe Vincent and Max Struess as sweeteners in a deal. Like, I get that. But you also can't bet on doing that forever. And I do think that this, there, you still need a base level of high end talent that I really think that this Heat team is missing and kind of bit them and, and kind of showed itself against the Celtics and would have had they even gotten to the finals. I would be really hesitant to trade up whole, like all of the assets, all the draft picks, all these things, if not for that serious, like A1 style upgrade. Yeah. And the interesting thing that's going to be about this team with running it back is they had such a cohesion of everybody being okay with this is your role enjoy each other's success right. and that's cool i mean it's a beautiful thing that they all say they all sound like little uh udonis has them disciples <laughs> it's a beautiful thing i love it to death i eat that heat stuff up this you know but i think it it does have an expiration date especially yeah. for these guys who want to make it in the league and you heard max Dr how confident did max drew sound in the exit interviews like this guy really thinks that he is going to be around for a decade plus maybe he will um so is he going to be cool with like hey i'm taking a back seat to, he, this guy wants to take his contract here and start too mm -hmm. so is he going to be cool not starting behind tyler hero is he going to be disgruntled victor oladipo is a fascinating one yep vic wants to be a star again is vic going to come is he going to come back in a city that he likes to be in in an organization he wanted to be in but how much does he want to be in the yank my role? This is what my role is. Am I going to, does he want to start? Like, it's, so right. they got to find what the right mix is. Cause they had a beautiful mix this year of everybody kind of being cool with it. Cause almost everybody had their little opportunities to start and get in there. And nobody was really banished except for Markeith Morris and Duncan Robinson by the end of it. Um, but they got to kind of find that right mix of it too, of what, what will this roster, how does it look best? Uh, because I don't know if everybody will necessarily be, as uh, kumbaya on the role this right. year. Tyler said he wants to start. I think there's an expectation. I think that that two-guard spot is wide open in training camp. I don't believe by any stretch that Max Drews is sort of in the incumbent with the advantage inside track, anything like that. Victor Oladipo wants to start. He said that. He views himself as... you got seven guys on this roster who believe that they should be starting, if not more, right? right? Depending on what you ask Duncan Robinson and, and Strews. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a really interesting dynamic. And, you know... You get this close, you wonder what the hangover of that and, and how that impacts sort of that kumbaya, kumbaya nature of the team is. Uh, a couple of quick ones, really quick. Uh, the best interview on the Miami Heat this season was who? Um, I would say post game. I would say PJ Tucker. I think that he's just the rawest. I think that he is. Uh, he he can go the most in depth. He could be funny. He can kind of give you anything. So my favorite post game interview uh, was PJ Tucker. Um, favorite guy that I had on my t uh, on my show this year that I talked to, I would probably say would be Bam because uh, yeah. he'll get silly with us and uh, and be funny. I know that after games he could be a little bit you know one line and that's it, um, especially if they lose. But uh, but he he was uh, I would say uh, favorite guy to have on the show this year. Uh, I can't disagree with any of those picks. I think those are the, those are the correct answers. Um, all right, last one here. Rank the futures of the South Florida sports teams. So the Heat, the Dolphins, the Marlins, the Panthers. If you are buying stock or whatever, however we want to frame it, we could make it any segment you want, but just rank the futures of those four. Um, I'll put the Heat first. I just always have faith in their front office. And you have Jimmy Butler, who I think is one of the best players in the NBA. Um you know, Bam out of bio, if he's healthy, he's probably the defensive player of the year the whole year. So I think that they are pretty good. They were a shot away from the NBA Finals. So I put them one, two. I'm actually going to put the Dolphins. I think Ooh. that um, I'm a I'm a big believer in their defense. And I'm buying into this Mike McDaniel stuff, man. People Me too. 
I mean, like this guy is, uh, I just like him. I, there's something about like, I just like watch him uh, going around camp the last couple of weeks. And he's just like bouncing up and down. He's like all over. He's just, uh, he, he just seems so full of life. He's in there with the players. I don't know what he's going to be like during a three game losing streak, but I, uh, I'm liking the magic <laughs> right now. And, and Tua just seems, uh, Tua had a quote uh, this week about, you know, I've never been around a coach who's positive. It's like he's, it's kind of weird. Like <laughs> he goes, my dad, Nick Saban, and others were just all so hard on me. Nick and, Saban was hard on him. I find that hard to believe. Yeah. So I think that that's a. Uh, I, I think that's, and I like Tua. Uh, Tua's getting a little froggy. Tua threw some yeah. shade at the old uh, play calling. He uh, called out Twitter warriors. So I like that from Tua. I'm a believer in Tua. Um, it's just God. I hope the offensive line is good this year. I hope it's yeah. any anything respectable. Uh, I go Panthers, and the reason I rank Panthers, people say, well, how are the Panthers not two? What they did this year in the playoffs was so disappointing to me. Yeah. I feel like it's a it's a turning point. Like, I feel – people may say, oh, no, well, the, the same thing happened to the Lightning. No, no. Like, this is – the Lightning has been their daddy for years, and then they just put it on them worse. They may have the more – they may have the most talent, arguably, out of any of the teams down here in South Florida – Mm -hmm. But I was so disheartened in what happened in that postseason that 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 that, that to me punishes them in the rankings. And then the Marlins, who knows? Come on, dude. Like I, <laughs> I love that team. I, they were my first sports love. But you know, it's Sandy Alcantara and Jazz Chisholm and a whole bunch of nothing. <laughs> um, I actually agree with you on the rankings too. I'm a, I'm a Tua fan. I love the Hill trade. I love the speed. I'm very happy with just you know what. I'm excited. I had somebody text me the other day. Do you think the two uh, Tyree Kill thing is going to work? And I was like, dude, it's way better than what was ever happening before that. So right. it'll, it'll work. It'll work in Miami. I don't know if it'll work based on Tyree. Tyree was supposed to be, past. Like, yeah, it was. It was Will Fuller last year was Tyree <laughs> Kill. Like, come on. Right. It's got to be better. It'll be better. Um, well, it doesn't get better than this. Brendan Tobin, 790 the ticket. Thanks so much for joining me, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it.